Starting in the second half of 2022, a saying began to gain popularity on the internet in China: "Save the boss." Saving the boss is saving the job. Many Chinese people have been shocked by the cold numbers on the internet. That is, in the first half of 2022, 460,000 companies announced their closure, and 3.1 million self-employed people have canceled their business. A Chinese media outlet described it this way: "What is feared now is not that employees quietly go to a job interview, but that the boss quietly leaves to find a job." The Pearl River Delta and the Yangtze River Delta are the two major processing and manufacturing centers of China's foreign trade exports. And many bosses here have fallen on hard times because of the lack of international orders. It's hard to be a boss this year. All industries are in decline. In order to maintain the factory, profits have to be squeezed and squeezed. Many have even accepted orders with zero profit outright. The purpose is simple: to keep the cash flow. Rent has to be paid. There are daily expenses. Raw materials have to be bought. Workers' wages have to be paid. Everyone is tightening their belts. To save the boss, what a ridiculous statement! But it reflects exactly how difficult it is to do business this year. The first half of the year we struggle to keep the job. The second half of the year we struggle to save the boss. To the end of the year, we have to do everything possible not to let the boss go to work in some other companies. Running a business is getting really very difficult. Alas. According to data released by China's General Administration of Customs, China's exports fell 9.9 percent year-on-year in December 2022, widening the decline from 8.7 percent in November and marking the biggest drop since February 2020. The Financial Times quoted a global shipping consultant firm on January 25, 2023, as saying that order cancellations this year were unusually high due to falling demand in the West. It predicted the cancellation rate for ships heading east from Asia across the Pacific or to Europe would reach 31% in the coming weeks, compared to 23% in the same period last year and 16% in 2021. Let's see how miserable this terminal is. This way bridge is getting rusty, and I don't know how long it's been without traffic. It's over. It's over. Now it's all over. Everywhere is empty. The once congested roads in this major terminal in Guangdong Province and also in the Pearl River Delta region are now empty. Trucks are parked all over the parking lot, reflecting how depressed the foreign trade export industry is. The same is true for the manufacturing industry in the Yangtze River Delta, centered on Shanghai. This is the inland port of Yiwu, Zhejiang Province, the commodity capital of the world. It's very quiet right now. The Chinese government is carefully covering up the situation of its major economic regression. So it isn't easy to tell from the statistics how serious the situation is. But bosses working in related fields already have a clear sense that 2023, which has just begun, is going to be a tougher than expected year. It used to be a busy factory, but look at it now. It's empty. A lot of equipment has been packed up. They will be removed one after another in the next two days. Some of the large machines have also been sold cheap. Some assembly lines will be packed and removed over the next two days. How should I say it? It's some heartache and also some resignation. This year, I have a client who owes me more than one million RMB, or about 150,000 USD, and he still hasn't paid me yet. 
He hasn't messaged me for days, and I'm worried I'll lose contact with him. I will likely lose contact with him. It's too hard to be in the garment industry this year. My factory has to stop working again. No orders. I can only take a holiday. Look at this situation in our warehouse. It's full of goods from top to bottom. Our plant is also filled with goods. We're counting on selling these furniture to pay wages. I always thought that these two years didn't have much impact on the furniture industry. But today, I really feel it. It's very difficult. I told the staff we might as well take a vacation if we can't sell our goods. Our counterparts, do you have the same experience? In today's environment, you must do what you can, even if you can't. Right now, don't dream about making much profit. The boss has to take orders with low profit or even zero profit. Why? Because more than 100 employees are waiting for you to pay salaries, so they have food on the table. I never thought this year would be so hard. I heard that four or five factories are closing down here every day, and there are countless people unemployed. We still have to pay the mortgage and the car loan. This is the factory. My partner and I invested 5 million RMB in 2010, and in 2020 there was no order to fulfill. The factory lost more than 1 million, and someone wanted to buy our factory, but offered only 300,000. 5 million became only 300,000 RMB. Brothers, do you think it's infuriating? A foreign trade customer placed an order, then cancelled it. Several thousands of products made for him have been sitting here for six months. They are all ready to be packed and shipped out. Now they are sitting here in the warehouse for half a year already. On February 14th, the European Union Chamber of Commerce in China released its 2023-2024 Shanghai recommendation, calling on the Chinese government to restore the confidence of foreign companies and to repair the conflicted international relations. As a result of the epidemic control in 2022, up to 92% of European businesses suffered revenue losses due to supply chain disruptions, indirectly impacting Shanghai's business environment. According to the Chamber's Business Confidence Poll released last year, only 12% of European member companies surveyed were willing to set up their headquarters in Shanghai, and 500 European companies have already moved to Singapore to set up their headquarters. The European Chamber has more than 620 member companies in Shanghai, accounting for nearly one-third of the total members. Foreign companies occupy a pivotal position in Shanghai's economy. According to the Vice President of the European Chamber, foreign companies account for 25% of Shanghai's economic growth, 33% of its tax revenue, 20% of the city's jobs, and 66% of the city's import and export sales, and 30% of industrial output. China's economy and business environment are deteriorating. Shanghai is like this, not to mention other provinces and cities. As we have seen earlier, many enterprises in Zhejiang province and Guangdong province are on the verge of bankruptcy because of no orders. These provinces were once major exporters of household goods such as clothing, but as orders from Europe and the US dropped, it has led to high debt for private companies. <laughs> Brothers and sisters in the garment business, will our industry pick up in 2023? The epidemic has shut us down for three years. How many Guangzhou garment wholesalers have closed? And what I see around me is that many of my peers can no longer continue and have to close their businesses. Now that it's opened up, can our industry go back to the way it used to be? I don't feel too optimistic. The general environment isn't good. All industries are contracting. People have less money on hand. It'll inevitably reduce spending on things like clothing that aren't necessities. Clothing is not a necessity. The frequency of replacement will be reduced, so to return to the original situation, it will take at least two to three years. If you have enough money on hand to survive these two or three years, it might still do. If not, you must change direction to find a way out in this economic winter. Take a look, a factory is being demolished. This factory is located in the industrial area of Chang'an town, Dongguang city. Because of the epidemic, this factory is facing the fate of being demolished. This factory used to take orders from the US and was in partnership with Apple. It had a total of three companies in town. We can see from the scene that all the equipment inside the factory has been dismantled and piled up in the yard. 
workers keep throwing out more equipment from inside. So, this year, it's hard to find work, and it's also unstable. January 22nd is the Chinese New Year. Migrant workers usually go back home to their families for the holiday. A week after Chinese New Year, tens of millions of workers have returned to their factories. But now, many have found that their jobs are no longer there. This is Ningbo, Zhejiang province, where a textile factory is suddenly closed down and hundreds of employees don't get the salary they are entitled to. They gathered at the entrance of the factory to demand their salaries. A large crowd is moving forward. Keep it up. Persevering to the end means victory. Some companies have begun to arrange for employees to take turns to be off. We have to rotate off the production line because we don't have many orders. The production line has to be cut. We will make this arrangement for about a half a month, and if there is no growth in orders after half a month, we will find another way. We know it's difficult for everyone, but we can only maintain the factory in this way. We believe that in a month or two, the situation will be better. But it's real that the general external environment isn't good, and we aren't the only factory facing difficulties. Layoffs are happening. People are packing up and leaving every day. No one knows when it'll be their turn, and the machines in the workshop are being moved out. They are waiting to be packed and shipped out. All the machines behind me will be moved to Vietnam. They have already started the moving process. Many machines in the workshop are shut down too, and a lot of equipment has been relocated abroad. No orders, so not so many workers are needed. In cities like Shenzhen or Suzhou, migrant workers in rural areas return to the cities where they used to work, but many can no longer find work. In late February, a combination of information from multiple sources showed that hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of workers are expected to be stranded in those cities, and they don't know where to go. There are so many people seeking jobs after the Chinese New Year this year that it's estimated that all the hotels in Shenzhen are now full. I've been to a half a dozen hotels and they are all full. Do you have any rooms? It's full. Is there any room? Yes, there is. How much is a night? There are options of 88 RMB and 98 RMB. Just now, that hotel cost 80 to 90 RMB, that is 11 to 13 USD a night, which is too expensive for me to afford. Tonight, I can only live on the streets. What is the situation in Suzhou now? There are a lot of people here, at least 80,000 to 100,000 people are stranded in Suzhou, and there are probably more than 200,000 workers in the whole Yangtze River Delta who are looking for work. Indeed, factories can't use that many people this year. If you haven't left to find a job at this time, we suggest that you should cancel your temporary resident registration because now the market is very bad. Even if you come out, it is very difficult to find a job. Eight out of ten enterprises aren't hiring, two are hiring, but they only hire a few workers. If you are still in your hometown and haven't left, don't come. I heard that a large number of people are fleeing Suzhou now. Why is that? If you haven't yet left for Suzhou, don't come. Today is February 12th and all businesses in Suzhou are already at capacity. Most of the workers are stranded. You can't even find a factory to work in. Even the factories that are hiring only need 10 to 8 people a day, and there are more than 100 to 200 people applying for jobs. If you have a job, don't jump ship so easily. If you are interviewed for a job, you must do a good job. It's not easy to even enter a factory, and it's arduous to keep working, but if you quit, you will waste your time, and it will be hard to find another job. The situation in factories is very unstable. Even if you sign up today, tomorrow the work might stop right away. When the three-year epidemic is over, many people think there will be high labor prices in Suzhou. But you are wrong. If someone promises to work in an electronics factory for 30 RMB, that is 4.3 USD an hour, don't believe it. It's all a lie. 
It's really hard to find a job today. I went to the agency to have a look. Many factories are in the state of no hiring, leaving me with no choice. I have to lie down. I can't continue like this. I have spent so much money every day. Now, even renting a hotel is becoming very difficult. So I've decided to rent an apartment in Dongguang and stay here for a while. When the market improves, I will go and look for a job. For those who can still work in the factory, they may be lucky, but such luck comes at a big discount because the salary is much lower than before. Speaking the truth offends people because it's too harsh and heartbreaking. The truth has broken many people's good dreams, but there is no other way. We still have to tell the truth. For example, this year's labor market price, we judged the current situation in advance very early, when many people still scolded us, saying that you were too bad to push the price so low. But half a month has passed, it is now proved that our judgment is correct. This is the truth. Because the more time goes by, the lower the labor price will be, especially this year. Although we foresee this in advance, but when we really see it, we think how it could be so bad. Just after the Chinese New Year, the labor price is dropping like an avalanche, a complete mess. But people can't stop working. The day before yesterday, I posted a video saying that all the factories in Wenzhou were on holiday. Many people came to me and rejected. Our factories aren't on holiday, we are still very busy so and so. To be honest, in this off-season, you have to thank your bosses. They support the workers because the boss may be a few thousand dollars a day, tens of thousands of dollars or even more than a hundred thousand dollars a day in losses. Because of the off-season, they want to keep you. People should know to be grateful. The bosses are now really difficult, very difficult. Bosses, I appreciate you. The worst thing is that it's not the worst time yet. A more dangerous situation is likely to lie ahead. Not only the Chinese micro-enterprise or medium-sized enterprises don't receive international orders, it is likely that more large multinational enterprises will pull out of China. A netizen tweeted, Japan Toshiba has 33 plants urgently evacuated out of the CCP country. 400,000 people lost their jobs. In Shanghai, Shenzhen, and Dongguang, 600,000 people can't find work. Apple, OEM companies, and Dongguang hardware factories don't have orders. Three factories are already closed down. 120,000 people face unemployment. 4.6 million factories without orders are wailing. The largest wave of unemployment in the history of CCP country is here. We don't have a way to confirm the authenticity of these tweets, but similar news is already flying around China, causing anxiety and confusion among many middle class and even elite people who are closely watching the economic development situation. A few days ago, there was news on the internet that Microsoft Corporation in Suzhou was withdrawing its capital, and today there was news that Panasonic was leaving. We are all quite concerned about these two things. We have to. These two are representative events. How many other foreign companies will pull out of Suzhou for various reasons like these two companies? The departure of high-end talent will be very obvious to the city's economy and property market. At present, government documents show that the future is less about speed and efficiency and more about providing jobs. In other words, people are experiencing unprecedented difficulties in finding employment. Many Chinese don't understand what is happening and why international orders have disappeared overnight. Where are all our foreign trade orders going? High-end, mid-range and low-end orders are basically all lost. We can only rely on domestic consumption and internal circulation. The topic of the loss of foreign trade orders is now of great concern to everyone, and I'm sure you're not new to it. Recently, too many people are talking about this matter. It also shows how serious the situation is. Because of the time concern, we won't go into details on this topic. From the information provided here, it reveals that a major factor behind these missing orders is that there has been a fundamental change in the confidence of Western investors in the CCP system. We can see this in the dynamics of U.S. investors. Tough communist measures and a growing geopolitical crisis have prompted top U.S. investment managers to look outside of China. These firms are now targeting the European market. 
The Financial Times reported on January 23rd that major U.S. firms such as Capital Group, J.P. Morgan Asset Management, T. Rowe Price, PricewaterhouseCoopers, and BlackRock are planning to expand their long-term offices in Europe. An industrial expert said that while China may be reopening, investment firms are turning to Europe because of the CCP's once stringent anti-epidemic measures and tensions between the U.S. and China, which have deterred investment firms. Another professional said Europe remains an attractive market and it's the largest wholesale market outside the U.S. It's a responsible place to invest under a well-established regulatory environment. Pacific Investment Management announced it's opening its first office in France in February. Other top U.S. investment managers such as KKR and Apollo are also setting their sights on Europe.